Hello and welcome to the second Property Entrepreneur Deals, Deals, Deals podcast with me, your host, Mark Barrett. Uh, we're going to go behind the scenes of some of the UK's most creative, lucrative and award-winning property deals. So my second guest is a friend of mine and fellow property entrepreneur board member. I'd like to welcome Andy Babayan. Andy, how are you doing? Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Thank you for having me on. Very good. Very good. So I've um, been really uh, looking forward to this, Andy, because I uh, um, appreciate how experienced you are. You've done uh, a lot of developments and it'd be great to uh, just go through about your background, because I know you've had quite an interesting background before uh, getting involved in, in property. And also so we can learn about how are you kind of um, going through your property uh investing at the moment and uh, looking at a particular deal of yours, which is a, a fantastic deal, and also some of the uh, top tips you've got for us. So uh, for those that maybe uh, haven't come across you before, would you give a personal introduction? No problem, Mark. So my name's Andy Babayan. I'm based down on the south coast in Brighton. Um, I've been uh, a landlord for coming up 20 years. I graduated, I did a business degree in Manchester. I then, like my dad, I then went to Sandhurst and oh. then commissioned into the Royal Engineers where I worked for a, a small amount of time in sort of heavy construction project management, which helped to um, increase my sort of, uh, you know, awareness of project management and also working with trades but I then actually sort of I didn't enjoy that as much as, as I thought I would. So I then moved into EOD and bomb disposal, where I spent the rest of my, my military career. So I, was, I, I then served from 2002 up to the end of 2009. Um, when I, I left, I just sort of I'd, I'd had a really interesting time. I've been away a lot, Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, Oman. Um, Lots, lots of other places as well, lots of exercises. So it was a really, really busy time, but I, I, I left to get married. And then very soon after, my wife Kate and I moved over to the Middle East, where I sort of continued my career, this time working in commercial defence embedded within their armed forces. Mm -hmm. It was a really, really good time for me in terms of sort of working out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. But I didn't realise it wasn't going to be commercial defence. Uh, I, I found it quite frustrating but I, I, I love the experience. I love, I love the location. We spent a lot of time traveling. We went, you know, we sort of, we, we used it as a base to go all over the world. And I've, I've always loved traveling. Uh, we both have. So I then sort of started to build the idea of turning from what, you know, I was, I was a landlord. I used to develop properties with my brother. We used to use the sort of regimental minibus, take trades people down and do up properties. But I was sort of interested in turning it from, you know, very much a sort of, you know, low level landlord into doing it on a slightly more commercial basis. So that that the idea for that was born in the Middle East. We then moved back with um, just before the birth of our twin sons and set up Target 5 in Brighton. The the, the aim really there was to, to set up something that was going to enable ourselves to grow our own portfolio but also develop properties for other people mm -hmm. and the, the key focus was making money obviously but making money in the right way so yeah we wanted to, to have a sort of focus on on our core values so the the, the 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 reason behind the name was to sort of to target to look for the five our five core values of honesty integrity respect for ourselves respect for others and ambition and to, um, we saw our main client base as being ex forces and uh, expats, mm -hmm. and, and and that's really where the name then came from. As as it was, our, our first clients were from that background, but sort of subsequently that that changed like lots of the business. So since since then, um, since two thousand and thirteen, the business was incorporated. I've then been growing my own portfolio and been developing for other people as well so target five sources and develops properties for ourselves and others right the way across the south coast from Bognor to Eastbourne so really across Sussex and we've been really busy we've 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 
carried out more than 400 developments wow. across student HMO, new build, residential conversion, residential consolidation, and commercial conversion. And now we focus almost entirely on commercial conversion and land development. So that means new build, but also planning uplift and selling stuff with planning. Okay. Wow. So it's a great experience you've got there. Um, just to um, recap on the property entrepreneur side of things, when did you join the program? So I joined the program three years ago. Uh-huh. And since then, I we've sort of built the property entrepreneur methodology into all areas of our business. So that means my own personal um, business. So I've got a group of companies that I own with my wife, with our kids set up in trust. And we, we, we go through the process of setting targets each year and running through the seasons. We do exactly the same for target five. In fact, my business partner, Tina, is on advanced. Sven um, is on the program. Tim is on the program. And um, yeah, we've had other people last year on the program as well. So it's, it's, it's completely implemented now and integrated within our businesses and, and ditto with Sussex Property Partnership, the letting agency, which will have sort of people going on it next year. That's the plan. Oh, fantastic. And is it, you're a mechanic, is, is that right? You're, you're wealth dynamic profile. Exactly. Yes. Yes. A yeah. mechanic. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you find with that? Is that help you to implement the, the blueprint having the mechanic profile? Yes. Yeah, it, 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 it has. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I think I, I think the sort of having this, we, we've got a decent, we've got a decent mix across the, um, you know, across the, um, we've got, you know, um, you know, a Lord, we've got, I'm unsure the various sort of tempo, um, we've got tempo, we've got, um, a couple of blazes as well so but yeah no for me I mean it's 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 good because I sort of have the, that sort of creator side and lots of ideas but then also yeah I really like the sort of the blueprint and being able to implement that type of thing as well so that's, that's been quite quite critical and I love I do enjoy this this season that we're in now yeah yeah okay excellent so just moving on now to sourcing obviously you, you've done a, a a lot of property deals there how do you go about sourcing uh projects at the moment what are the main ways we use a number of different ways to source our deals so we do direct to vendor campaigns we are we work very closely with uk property angels i'm on their board of advisors and also we were their sort of pilot negotiator down Mm -hmm. across um, a number of bn postcodes and that works really, really well. So that we do a lot of stuff on the commercial side with them. And we're moving into doing stuff on land. We write our own letters for land yeah. as well. Uh, we then work with agents. We work with the commercial agents, land agents. And we're looking for pre-market opportunities. We'll buy stuff on market if the numbers work, but we like things pre-market. Yeah. So you've got less competition. We also work with the, the sort of lettings and management arm of the commercial agents and also letting agents as well on the residential side to buy X rental stock, which okay. works really well. So it's, it's, it's all about relationships and processes for us. Yeah. So if you've sourced a deal, then let's just uh, have a look at how you stack the numbers. What, what's kind of like the process that you go through now and uh, looking at possibly any tips that you might be able to give people on this? So it's really, really important that you understand what, what you know, the properties are worth, you know, what, what they're worth, you know, what, what you need to be buying at and what they're going to be worth when, when they're de- going to be developed for the various different, you know, sort of type of properties you're going to develop. So that means really knowing the area and knowing the square foot values. So everything starts for us in understanding the square foot value that, you know, for residential. So, for example, I know that, in Worthing, which is one of our towns, that the, the square foot value for residential is between 360 and 420. In Brighton, it's between about 425 and about 600, depending on the area. I know Little Hampton is between 320 and 370. So it's like I know straight away that's in my mind. Yeah. And then you, so then we're then looking, and you know, you know, then what the conversion costs. So conversion costs can be anything from sort of 75 up to about 150 pounds a square foot. 
So it's you then it's then just sort of being able to see so really need to know what the values are at the end. That's what yeah. you're going to be able to refinance or sell it for. What you're going to have to spend to make it that, and yeah. any other additional costs. Yeah. Because if you know that, then you can work backwards and work out what you need to buy at. And we could buy, you know, I've I bought stuff and and paid market you know market price for something it's been on the market look at it fine that works you know we'll pay that because we know exactly what we need to pay so everything we do is very bookish you know Sven who heads up the property intelligence um is you know is very steely in his sort of approach and and it's um he uh is really sort of focused on on those on those figures, and that's that's how we operate. We know exactly what we're going to do. We, we don't tend to go to viewings unless we know roughly, you know, the sort of the figure that we 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 need to pay is sort of somewhere within the ballpark of what they're yeah. we're look, they're looking for. Because otherwise, we're wasting everyone's everyone's sure. time. So, yeah, okay, that, that, that's good. So obviously. Um... I think for people that are kind of like uh, maybe starting out or getting into a new strategy, it'd be finding out what, what properties uh, available, you know, whether it's a cost per square foot per, per square meter that they can buy for. And then what the end values are that, you know, you know, so well based on your areas, what the, what the bill costs are to be able to then work out the margins and what, what can, what they can offer. So that's good. Uh, as far as then structuring the deal, so you, you, you've uh, made an offer, you've had it accepted. How do you normally structure your property deals as far as how you hold them and then also how you fund them? Okay, so I, I, I tend to put anything that I plan to hold long term, I'll put into my holding company. Anything that I plan to, to turn will go into development company. The um, In terms of how we operate on JV basis or through Target 5, we tend to set up SPVs for each project. Okay. Um, in terms of myself, then, I mean, I, I, I tend to finance stuff where possible, but a good relationship with Lloyd's Bank. You know, I've, I've known Elliot, who is our local relationship manager for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, he's a keen cyclist. I'm a keen cyclist. We know each other well. And, you know, he, we, we work very closely and he's, he's worked very closely with us on structuring deals. So where possible, I, I will use Lloyd's um, on the way in. They've got decent pro- decent products at somewhere you know just over six percent. Use typically sixty five percent of the total cost or sixty yeah. percent of GDV, depending on on the, the deal. Um, otherwise, we will use got a private lender who is a local developer who did very well um, over the past sort of twenty thirty years, and is now him and his business partner are essentially cashing out. They've retained, you know, as, as many people are doing, they've retained a sort of small, you know, a small portfolio that will serve them and then they act as lenders. So they, well, they, they will work basically in, a, in, a, in a, the same way as a, a typical sort of bridging company, except they don't have any of the fees attached oh, and cool. they can work very quickly. So the, the quickest deal we've done with them has been four days. And then otherwise we'd use other bridging companies, yeah. These other bridging companies typically tied to family offices, only because it tends to be slightly more personal level, and also it's it's the fees with bridging that can kill things. So those companies tend to work well. And private finance, what kind of like uh, rates and loan to values would you pay on something like that? It it, it depends on on what it is. As a sort of senior debt, then it would be typically sort of seventy percent loan to value, mm-hmm. and then a hundred percent on of development. Okay. And then rates range from sort of eight to. 10 11 percent but what we always look at is is what the sort of you know the what the overall cost is of the lending so it's just building in all of those fees yeah i don't tend to like anything that goes into double digit um but then in, in some situations if you've got something that's you know particularly um sort of fruity then you can you can find that you you do that but if we if we if we if we do something expensive we tend to have an, an exit to move something onto reasonably quickly that reduces that cost. Okay, excellent. So what I'd like to do is if, if we can go through one of your recent projects, and I think the one on George Street and Hove was the one that you've mentioned. So could you just uh, give us a bit of an overview as to what the project is and uh, how you sourced it? Okay, so 53, 54 George Street in Hove. George Street is... 
Um, one of the main pedestrianised streets in Hove, just south of the station, between the station and the sea. Uh -huh. So super, super busy, loads of footfall. And the, 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 the building was a bank. So there's an ex-bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, been empty for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we targeted it along, along with a, a number of other properties in the area and, and wrote to the owner. So we wrote to the landlord. As it was, the owner had just put the property on the market discreetly with a with um, uh, an agent sort of based around the Gatwick area. Yeah. We then were able to step in, or I was because of personal purchase, step in on on a sale that was proceeding, and to buy it for the same. Um, for the same price from uh, Martin, who is the chap selling it, who's a London-based lawyer, very experienced. We uh, bought it reasonably quickly, um, was able to structure it through Lloyd's and push it through quite quickly. Um, I knew the opportunity was there because like we, we like to buy banks because they generally occupy a really big footprint, lots yeah. of... Um, Lots of ancillary accommodation. You tend to get ancillary accommodation with banks because they don't um, they don't tend to have residential or anything else above it because mm -hmm. of the risk for people sort of drilling through and, and sort of robbing them or whatever it is. So that, you know you sort of um, lots of space. And and I knew from looking at the the, the planning register that had been a um, planning secured for two flats above above the the bank. We we do a lot of stuff a lot of permitted developments com completely aware of what we can do in terms of class G, what was class M, now MA, and the various different um, permitted developments. So I knew that under class G, I could vary the, the planning permission that was already there. Um, I could get two flats above, but then also partially implement the planning condition, which means I was able to add an extension on the back and the roof terraces. So instead of having two flats above, I then turned it to four flats above, four bedroom, four one bedroom flats. Yep. And then we split the bank into two on the ground floor, two commercial units. And that's what we have now have is two commercial units and four flats. Excellent. Excellent. So you sourced it, you, you knew your numbers. Um, this was a property that you was going to keep. So we talk about the kind of like the wealth pyramid, uh, cash flow, profit, and assets. Where did that fit with the? This was uh, an asset for to hold. Is that right? Yes, and no, that that's it. But very very much an asset to hold, and and I sort of keep a, a system within my own personal portfolio of I have some properties that you know are, are really sort of high yielding, probably in slightly. Um, less attractive areas uh -huh. and they're and they're really useful for now you know we're paying kids through school and things like that whereas you know for me properties like this on george street sit sort of right at the top of the pyramid because they're you know long long-term assets you know essentially four single lets and two commercial units that are relatively easy to let very very close to the you know they're not going to move the train station they're not going yeah. to move the sea so they're sort of in in you know they're sort of in the perfect location so it's those type of properties that I look to sort of I can imagine you know holding for you know potentially you know the rest of my life okay that's excellent so let's just go through about the executing the the project how did you do you have like a uh, in-house team of builders or project managers and then uh just going through the project and what kind of challenges that you came up against? Yeah, so at Target 5, we've got the full infrastructure. So we have a, a property intelligence department. So even though I sort of dealt with it, pardon myself, I've got Sven, who's also on the program, who heads up property intelligence. He, um, his team helped me to analyze the deal. We then have um, Tina, who's on the advance, my business partner, but she looks after conveyance and also finance so she, mm -hmm. she, she was able to help me getting that through and then tim who's on the program uh, runs our project management department so he then managed the project through in fact his business brighton renovations in this instance was also the main contractor so typically we'll have a project manager and a main contractor just so yeah. happens that tim was sort of double hatting on this one so you know i I was able to use the sort of the full team and I pay my, I pay target five fees 
to to do this. I pay my own business much in the same way, you know, as I would do another business. Okay. But it's worth it for me to have, you know, to have that team on it because, you know, each, each person who does or carries out the role is sort of specialist in that area. Um, and, the, and there were some challenges. It was, you know, it was going through COVID, there were challenges around um, materials, challenges around, you know, staff and illness and, yeah. you know, it was like really, you know, um, Stuart, who is Tim's business partner, who's also on the program. Um, unfortunately, he had a, a personal loss, um, which is really sad. And you know, there, there were lots of things that happened. And it, I think I, th- I think we've all experienced, you know, a lot, yeah. uh, you know, and as, uh, over the last couple of years. Um, there were some. We then had some just just some challenges around planning. So e- even though we were able to go through um, Class G, you know, um, and essentially just to, to, to enact to, to enact the new use you know with, without any sort of um, further prior approval uh, we um, we then uh, had an enforcement letter which just is, is again quite standard when you've got when you've got one planning permission in place and then essentially something else enacted it's just a matter of process to yeah. for there to be some form of enforcement. We've got a good relationship with um, uh, the council and this specific lady I know well, but still that took some time, which meant that it delayed um, the refinance. So the, the refinance took quite a long time on this. So it was sort of, it was, it was the, the project took a while to do. It probably ran over by two or three months on the development. Mm-hmm. And also it ran over by a good couple of months on the refinance. So yeah. it was, th- th- those was, you know, those were sort of some of the frustrations, but that's, you know, unfortunately typical with what, yeah. you know, a lot of other people have been experiencing up and down the country. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just then going through the exit, can you just go through, so this, you wasn't selling this, this was to be retained. Uh, do you have like a, go through the numbers with us? Yeah, of course. So the property was bought for 582,000, the usual sort of stamp duty and fees. In fact, I was able to, um, go through a, a stamp duty reclaim for multiple dwellings on this. Uh-huh. Um, we then, uh, I then spent, I think, all in just over 300 on the development. So the property stood in uh, 900,000 or smidge over. Yep. I refinanced it with Interbay at 1.35. So uh, just shy of 450,000, you know profit essentially equity that goes into my my portfolio um or you know so basically I was, as it was i refinanced out and was able to sort of i didn't leave leave any money in That's and awesome. then um and then rent the the wrap rent is just over eighty six thousand. so that's the the gross rent yeah refinance payments 38 grand a year so then allowing for the management fee, obviously I don't pay my own letting agent a huge amount of money, but yeah. I do pay some management. Um, I allow a little bit for maintenance. So it it brings me in um, just over £3,000 a month profit. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's none of your money in. Over three thousand pounds a month, which is what a lot of people kind of like can earn from like the the, the job and the four hundred and fifty thousand equity. Exactly, exactly that, and then able, then able to sort of you know leverage a lot of my time as well by you know using the team. So you know, I'd, obviously, I'll, I would I would go there, but I didn't have to go there all the time. Yes, yeah. you know, Tim Tim is far better at that than I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, that is an awesome deal. So well done. Thanks, Mark. So um, thank you for your time today. Uh, just before we, we, we finish, I'd just like to go through uh, your three top tips that you could give. So, yeah, no problem. I mean, I mean, so in terms, of, in terms of investing, I think that, the, and I always sort of give the, the most important one first, but it's, it's focus, which is knowing what, what it is that you're trying to do. So that's focusing on a, on a strategy, Mm-hmm. And, and really understanding that and being really deeply competent in that area, that means knowing. So, for example, if you're if you're if you're focusing on commercial conversion, is understanding in and out what you can do under permitted development, 
you know what and 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 how and what you need to do to implement it yeah um because you know, i see so many mistakes being made um and i take no pleasure from that at all so it's just people where they don't have the focus they don't understand what they're doing so have the focus second one is is the location yeah you know and, and getting that because you see people trying to implement what you know in their area what people do in, and make successful in other parts of the country and that isn't always appropriate so making sure that your your the area is aligned to your focus yeah. you get to know that area that means know all of the agents know all of the um uh, know all of the other developers and get to know those people and work with them where you can because it's always better to have cooperation and not competition yeah and then the final thing is funding so you you know you need to have some access to some money now there are ways that people can do this in terms of working with people leveraging other people's wealth and experience but at some point someone's going to have to part with some money to buy something and you need to know how you're going to do that because in, and if you're able to have a solid funding line have people that you can work with and have the backing it makes it you know you you then become a very attractive proposition when you go and talk to agents you know they, they understand that you've got that money available for us we've got a great track record so you know it's um yeah, if you have those three things, then life becomes a lot more easy. Excellent. And for anybody that wanted to contact you, so you work with uh, people, um, what investors and, and people looking to uh, do their own projects as well. That's right. So we, um, I mean, we as it is now, we tend to we probably about sixty seven percent of everything we do we develop in house now. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for investment. We've um, recently set up our own company, SAS. We're looking to set up a property fund at the end of the, uh, well, it'll probably be the middle of next year now. So that, that that's happening. We'll be looking for investment in, in that. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give as much information as we've got, you know, at, at, um, at the time the SAS is open now. Uh, we're also, we, we source and develop properties for other people on a, on a you know, with, with, as a service. So, you know, people are, people are welcome to get in touch and you know we can tell them some more about uh, about what we do. We have regular investor days. We ran one yesterday, so we, we do those as well. So we're always keen to to um, to hear from people and to be able to communicate. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for your time, Andy, and uh, good to catch you up. Uh, so that's the end of our second deals, deals, deals podcast. If you've got any questions or you'd like any particular types of deals, then please get in touch. Uh, you can email me at info at property entrepreneur.co.uk. Thank you for listening. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.